Right, last year's Halloween specials were alright, but let's be honest, that was amateur hour. This year I want it bigger, better, spookier than it was before. <coughs> Nailed it. So back in July I put out a poll asking you guys what theme you'd like me to cover this Halloween. And well, storming it with quite a large lead, it turns out you lot wanted to see a big old Halloween themed spooktacular. And to start things off this season I thought I'd ease us in with a much loved Canadian Halloween TV movie that was pretty much a staple of Halloweens through the 80s and 90s. Today we're going to be talking about the 1978 animated short, Witch's Night Out. As far as I'm aware, this TV movie never actually made it over to UK shores, which is a real shame because this is exactly the kind of movie that would have been shown on the likes of Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon in the 1990s over here. Back then, Halloween wasn't really a big deal in the UK or at least it wasn't in my part of the country. Parents by and large didn't see the point in trick-or-treats, it was often compared to begging. There wasn't any mention of Halloween in schools, and the best you could find in the way of a kid's Halloween costume was a plastic skeleton mask and a bin liner. To Brits at that time, at least from my experience, Halloween was a US tradition, and we'd very much not like to have any of that thank you very kindly good sir good day. Kids TV, however, was a veritable playground back then. It was a treasure trove of Halloween-themed episodes of cartoon shows, Halloween shorts and TV movies. If my memory holds up, one of the biggest efforts on this front went to Fox Kids, who'd always run a non-stop Goosebumps marathon at Halloween, and in the build-up to the broadcast, one year had a Spot the Slime contest where at random one of their regular TV shows would be hit with a big blob of green slime, and if you called up and told them what the show was, you could win a prize. They were great times. More recently, however, while the national consensus on Halloween has become more of a thing in the UK, the effort on the television front has been somewhat diminished. You may get the odd Halloween-themed episode put out on the day itself, but by and large it seems that at the exact moment when the country would be at its most receiving of a massive shot of spooky Halloween goodness, everyone on the TV broadcasting and supermarket fronts just gone, eh, and wandered off. It's quite a sadness, really. But I digress. It wasn't until a couple of years ago that I learnt about Witch's Night Out, and based on the animation style alone, I decided it was worth checking out. It's often regarded as a lost or forgotten classic, and while I don't think I'd necessarily go that far, I did have a lot of fun with this one. The film was directed by John Leach. It was also written by Leach and his fellow writing partner, Isabel Jean Rankin who between them only have two broadcasting credits. This special, and its in-universe prequel, 1974's Christmas-themed film, The Gift of Winter. I'll be honest, before watching this, other than word of mouth saying how great it was, the idea that this was pretty much orchestrated by two people who at that time had only ever had one full credit between them for a special that went out four years previously made me a bit nervous for this one. I've learnt over my time doing this that the fewer credits, the less likely the production is to be a long-lost classic. I should have also learnt at this point to never judge a book by its cover. Witch's Night Out follows Small and Tender, two kids who are very excited for the up-and-coming Halloween festivities. They're enjoying wearing masks and stomping around and pretending to be monsters, but when the town's adults see Small and Tender it makes them start to overthink Halloween as an idea. They try to think of ways to instill a meaning or moral to the holidays, and while discussing it, even they start to get distracted and 
While veering wildly off topic, they all decide to hold a Halloween party in an allegedly haunted house to set an example for the children? Small and Tender listen to this rambling for a bit and it starts to make them feel disheartened, so they head home quite confused about why there needs to be a meaning of Halloween, when it should clearly all be about scares and spooks. Two of the adults go to check out the haunted house and it's there that we're introduced to the witch. A despondent and down on her luck sorceress who's depressed at the fact that she hasn't been given any opportunities to cast any spells in a very long time. She's on the verge of giving it all up when she overhears the adults mentioning that they're planning on throwing a party at her house and this sets her mind whizzing on ways she can mess with the party and the guests. Later that night, Small and Tender go out trick-or-treating, but the adults sneer at their costumes and patronise them to the point that they both pretty much give up and go home. Just as they're getting ready for bed, their parents tell them that they've got a babysitter for the rest of the night who'll be keeping an eye on them. This babysitter is Bazooey, who's here to act as the responsible yet relatable adult to the kids in this short, who tries to reassure them that they're cool and to get them to bed with a bedtime story about fairy godmothers. While this is in progress, however, the kids make a pleading call for a fairy godmother to come and help them celebrate Halloween properly by turning them into real monsters. This cry for help ends up reaching the witch, who was just about ready to start playing tricks on the grown-ups, and with a flick of her wand she flies through the night sky and crashes into the kids' bedroom, offering them a scary makeover that's guaranteed to make the grown-ups take them seriously. Bazooey pleads to the kids not to accept the witch's offer, but with a flick of her wrist the deed is done and Small and Tender are transformed into a terrifying werewolf and ghost combo. Bazooey still protests but the witch manipulates his better judgement and he agrees to be turned into a Frankenstein's monster of sorts. The group then teleport from the kids' bedroom back to the party, ready to show the adults a real night of fright. In a third act that will make the kids realise what's really important in life, and with a sudden moment of realisation for the witch, the true meaning of Halloween will be revealed. From the opening titles alone, this film pretty much instantly hooks you. It's got one of the coolest theme tunes I've ever heard for a kids' show. It's synth-infused funkery at its finest, and the opening titles really do the job in getting you on board with the short, by showing super colourful highlights of some of the things that are going to happen in this movie. And that amazing soundtrack doesn't just start and end with the title theme. The whole thing is punctuated with great sounding synthy pieces that I'd just love to get a copy of someday. It's eerie but playful and really has a tone about it that's just very unlike anything that was running on kids' specials at the time. I also really have to commend the script. It's a lightweight but well-written affair with characters that are quite relatable and a humour and tone that I really appreciated. I can imagine kids like Small and Tender being disheartened at Halloween not being spooky enough. And I know for a fact that I've hung around with adults who are very much of the style of the grown-ups in this feature. There's just something about the dialogue here that's very naturalistic. It feels like a genuine conversation, and it's interesting to see a film from the 70s tackle the worried, won't somebody please think of the children type of parents angle. Not only in a kid's film, but in the 70s I mean. Well, outside of PSAs, that is. It was pretty unheard of at the time. So I really have to give some serious kudos to the scripting here. It keeps it simple, but makes it effective, and that's what makes it work so well, in my opinion. The voice acting in here is also pretty solid, too. Gilda Radner, admittedly, is one of the only major standouts here, playing an absolute stonker as the witch. 
She has a really good range and her sly asides in this really help make the witch a likeable and sarcastic character. I'm quite shocked she hasn't become memes yet, quite honestly. I don't want to feel like I'm doing the rest of the cast a disservice though, and barring one or two slightly grating voices, the majority of the cast are absolutely fine. They get the tone of this script, they know the audience they're aiming for, and the whole thing feels like it was a fun experience to be a part of. The cast's styles keep things relatively simple, and they all come across as sincere. It would have been too easy for them to just crank this one out and for the cast to have come across as acting down to the audience. But it really feels like there was some love on this project, based on the vocal talents on display. So yeah, for the most part this is a very well handled production from an acting standpoint. I also have to say I absolutely loved the art style on this one. They do an interesting contrast in terms of art style, and I think it really works here. The characters are all fairly abstract, fuzzy, and minimalist. They don't resemble humans, but we can pretty much instantly identify them as humans, with each of the main players here being drawn in the style that matches their personality. For example, there's an adult in this movie who's a bit hippie new age, and as a result, she's drawn as a fluffy cloud-like form. But contrasting these very unique character designs, all of the objects and houses in this production are drawn very traditionally and typically. The buildings all look like buildings, and all the inanimate objects in this very closely resemble their real-world counterparts. These two styles play off each other, but Weirdly, where I know I should be resisting this strange mix-up, I think it actually works really well here. And some of the backing shots look absolutely gorgeous, with a rich and detailed evening glow about them that endeared me to the style tremendously. By the end credits, I was quite sad when I remembered that this team had only ever produced one other feature, because I'd have loved to have seen them do more in this style. In fact, while we're on the subject of the art style, I also have to say that the direction in and of itself was really striking. It uses the art style to its advantage to create a highly stylized, hand-drawn piece that really jumps out at you. Animation can be very difficult to try and direct because, unlike live-action films, you don't often get a second take especially when dealing with hand-drawn animation. It's usually the case that what comes out at the end is the final take, and if it doesn't come out how you envisioned it should, then it's a case of put up and shut up. There's maybe a couple of moments where I'd say that things could have been a little bit better planned in terms of character movement and pacing, but on the whole this is a really solid attempt, and it looks great even to my 2018 future eyes. This is only enhanced by the editing, which again has a good, solid pace. It isn't too fast or too slow, and it lets the story develop at its own rate. There's no sharp cuts, and other than a terrifically ham-fisted, harsh audio cut in the opening of the film, everything has a smooth transition, and the cuts definitely don't overstay their welcome. The only issue I could pick up on is the fact that for the DVD remaster of this feature, there wasn't a lot of attention paid to the framing for these animated scenes, as quite often you'll see the top and bottom of the film strip creeping into the shots, which I found a little bit distracting. On an unrelated note, and minor spoilers ahead, while it maybe would have been nice to see a bit more footage of the kids as monsters realising that they don't want to be monsters for the rest of their lives, I can equally appreciate that had they included more of that footage, there's a very real risk I'd have drifted off into padding territory. As a result, this film really doesn't overstay its welcome, it left me wanting more if anything. Now, I don't normally do this kind of thing on a Red Triangle episode, but this one's had a bit of an interesting release history. So, Witch's Night Out was initially released in 1978, 
It then pretty much sat on a shelf until 1983 when it was dusted off for a screening on both Fox and the Disney Channel. The response to these screenings were so positive that they continued to show this special every year well into the late 1990s. It was also released on VHS tape in the States in 1986, and then re-released again some time later in the late 90s. I imagine this was to coincide with its departure from its regularly scheduled spot. After that, the film pretty much went underground. It disappeared from the airwaves and from storefronts until 2014, when John Leach, working under his formal name Jonathan Rogers, alongside Mill Creek's animation director Jimmy Cross, remastered this film using the original elements. The DVD was released the same year with several bonus cartoons included. It was also later made available on both Hulu and Shout TV, though as of 2018 it has yet to receive uh, outside of the US release. The remastered version looks amazing, with really vibrant colours, crisp sharp animation and fully restored audio that sounds like it was recorded yesterday. It really does look great, especially considering just how cheap it is at the time of recording to pick up. Witch's Night Out won't change your life, but it will warm your heart. This is a lovely little animated feature that is to Halloween what the Boris Karloff version of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas is to Christmas. It has a unique art style and a wonderfully original soundtrack, and I really think if you have younger kids that you should pick this up and check it out. It's a life-affirming little feature that's quirky, funny and charming all in equal measures. As the witch herself says, Halloween is the only time where once a year we can be whatever or whomever we please, without the chance of being mocked or ridiculed. So this Halloween, check this film out, and go and enjoy this time of year in whatever way makes you happiest. <laughs>